Hello everybody, welcome back to another video as today we got uh, reviewing every single team's offseason so far as today. We're starting off with the Anaheim Ducks. As you guys all know, this is a series we've been doing for the past three years now where we go in, review the, you know, certain teams offseason like we're going to be doing with the Anaheim Ducks, give them a grade and uh, talk about what went on during their offseason and sometimes have a special guest as well. But before we get into talking about the Anaheim Ducks today I like to just say if you are new to the channel make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that like button as well that will be very much appreciated there boys so let's get into this one and also before that uh if you guys would like to put your grades down in the uh comment section below tell me guys what you guys thought of the Anaheim Ducks offseason as well so Let's get into talking about the Ducks here. And this is another team that is still in kind of a rebuilding phase. You know, they're still, they did small little pickups getting John Klingberg. Uh, they also got Ryan Strom and Frank Fortuno as well. So let's get into talking about their offseason. Now, they just hired a new GM in Pat Verbeek. And I got to say, Pat Verbeek's first offseason was very good. Now, he's been an assistant GM for Stevie Y, Stevie Eiserman, the GOAT of GMs, for the past, you know, I think it's nine years now. So, he's been under the helm of a very, very good GM and has learned a lot. And I gotta say, this very first offseason was very good. Had a very, very good draft, to say the least. Got a really nice defenseman and Pavel Mintikov. I, I, I think I said that name, right? Uh, had 62 points in 67 games. Is an offensive guy. Uh, who plays a pretty solid defensive game as well, and is a left-handed defenseman to kind of replace Hampus Lindholm, and, well, not Josh Manson, but, you know, this could be a potentially a guy that could be a, a top-two defenseman for the team, um, is looking like a very good defenseman for the future. Uh, the next pick, they also got Nathan Gosher, a uh, great two-way guy, uh, definitely... I don't think it was a little bit of a reach, but he's definitely not going to be a guy that's going to be a big point producer. But I, I think they see him as a guy that could be a second line guy, but could be a third line guy for them. Uh, especially with Mason McTavish and Trevor Zegras already up that middle. They even built it up even more. Uh, and then they also got Noah Warren, Noah Warren and also Tristan Lanou, which I do like the Tristan Lanou pick. Uh, a guy that doesn't have a lot of great foot speed, but is a great passer, great IQ, um, and put up 43 points in 63 games there in the queue. And I think he's going to be very, very nice for the N9 Ducks. Another right-handed defenseman builds up the depth a little bit more. And Noah Warren is just an absolute tank. Six foot five, 224 pounds. Not a guy that's going to be posting up a lot of points. But he has a big bomb for a slap shot and is very, very physical. You could definitely see him being like a shutdown defenseman of the future for the Anaheim Ducks. And you could really see that they were really focused on getting good defensemen, building up their, their pool in the defensemen. Because if you look at it, you know, they don't got a lot of great future defensemen. You know, Olin uh, Zellweger is going to be a great future guy. But you look at other guys, you don't have a lot of big names defensively. But for now, Pavel uh, Minyo, uh, Mintnikov, if I could say his name correctly. But now you add in Warren, now you add in Leno. Uh, the, the defensive core is really starting to build up for the future. And I think that's a big thing you need to focus on. Especially since you already got Zegers, you already got Terry, you already got Mason McTavish. You know, your last few top picks were those guys. Now you're starting to build up the defensive core. And I think it is very, very smart for the Anaheim Ducks. And I really, really like their draft. Uh, moving in the trades, I don't think they, yeah, they didn't do anything for their trades. Uh, these were just the trade deadline ones, which we all love those deals. So let's get into free agency and talking about their deals that they made in free agency. So the very first one we'll talk about is John Klingberg. Uh, he signed just a one-year deal at $7 million, has a no-trade clause, which is a no-trade clause up until January 1st, 2023, and then it turns into a 10-team no-trade clause uh, until the end of the season. And I absolutely love this signing for the Anaheim Ducks. Now, with John Klingberg, you know, he's an offensive defenseman, so definitely having Klingberg, Shattenkirk, and Jamie Drysdale up on your right side is definitely not ideal. Those guys, uh, Kevin Shattenkirk had a really rough year last year. Jamie Drysdale just does not play very well defensively. Great offensive defenseman, but definitely not reliable in the defensive end. And that's just going to be basically the entire defensive core for the Anaheim Ducks. 
their best defenseman is without a doubt Cam Fowler, who plays very good in the two-way section and uh, is still very good on the power play. But now you even get a better guy that could play up on the power play with John Klingberg. But I think the reason why they brought in John Klingberg, I think, is to help out the development of Jamie Drysdale, which I think will help, especially when you have Shannon Kirk and John Klingberg up on the right side. But with John Klingberg, when that comes into a 10-team no-trade clause and it comes trade deadline, this could be a guy that could fetch you a few picks and almost like a guaranteed first-round pick with John Klingberg, especially if you have retained that cap and move it down to 3.5. That's an appetizing contract for a lot of teams that are competing. So at the end, I'm Ducks are not going, you know, they're not doing that great during the regular season and you end up like, oh, you know, let's, let's trade away some of our other pieces that we can, you know, bring in some picks and build up more draft pick revenue, which they already have a ton. They have three second-round picks and a first round pick coming into this upcoming draft and you basically guarantee yourself another first round pick if John Klingberg you know goes into this next season and pops off which most likely he will you have a really good top uh, power play unit when you add Zegris, Troy Terry, you add Ryan Strom in that mix now. Like, it's a really, really good power play unit. And John Klingberg will most likely produce these same amount of points, maybe even more than what he had Dallas. And I absolutely love the move. It's a, you know, it's not a high risk move. It's a, it's a very low risk move. And you could trade him away for picks if your team ends up not going to the playoffs. Now, it's not a great move for John Klingberg because, you know, taking a one year try me type of deal at, you know, the age that he's at. Definitely not the most ideal move for the guy, but not terrible. Uh, moving to the next one, Ryan Strom signed a five-year, $5 million deal. Now, uh, he didn't sign a, any no-trade clause, nothing. So, you know, if we need to move him up, you can. And it's on a contract that's, you know, very easy to move. Uh, Ryan Strom is a very good offensive guy, generates a lot of offense. Not a great finisher, but generates a lot of offense and doesn't play that bad defensively. And the fun thing about Strom is you could really move him anywhere around the lineup. You could play him as a centerman. You could play him as a wing. And that is huge for the team, especially when you have Mason McTavish and Trevor Zegras as you're probably your one-two punch. You can move Strom to the wing. And I think that's really huge for the NIM Ducks, having that flexibility with a guy like Strom, being able to play him on the wing, being able to play him as a center, I think that's huge because if Mason McTavish isn't ready, then you can play Ryan Strom as your 2C this upcoming season. If, you know, Trevor Zegers falls to an injury, then you can play Ryan, or Ryan Strom as your first line guy. So I really, really like the move, and I think it's really good. It's at a deal that I really like Ryan Strom at. I thought Ryan Strom was going to be even signing for more. So seeing him sign for $5 million for five years, I think is a really good move for the N9 Ducks, and I don't see it as a, as bad uh, value. Moving on to the last signing was Frank Vertru which this is a move that is okay uh, a little bit pricey at 3.65 million as a guy that's a decent two-way guy he's a great finisher to note a uh, great finisher uh, he's probably going to fetch you, you know, 20 goals per season, 15, 20 goals a season, you know, going to register, you know, a good 30, 40 points a season for you. So it's not a bad move for Pat Verbeek, and it's only honestly three years. So it's not that bad of a deal, especially probably the time frame for this team becoming a really good competitive playoff team is three years. And Frank Fortuna's contract is ending after, you know, two years after Trevor Zegers' first contract, same with Troy Terry. So quite honestly, not a bad move. The value of the contract is a little steep on Vertruno, but still, he's a great producer at 32 points this year, 18 goals. He's going to be a guy that's going to, you know, bring some leadership, bring some toughness to the team. He's really speedy. He's energetic. There's a lot of things you like about Frank Vertruno, and especially near the tail end of the season for the Ducks, they had, like, they looked like they just had no heart. You know, they looked like they were death out there, especially since they were losing games. Bringing in Frank Fortuno will bring that energy to the team. What might bring a little bit of excitement. And this is going to be a really good leadership move because then Trevor Zegers and Troy Terry could kind of follow after that and like look at Frank Fortuno and see, you know, he's going out there and gunning. He's bringing that speed every single minute. And I think that's going to be a huge move for the Ducks moving forward. And he adds, you know, another top six kind of goal scoring type of guy that could even move down to the top nine if needed. So, quite honestly, Pat Verbeek had a very good first offseason here with the Ducks. Now, of course, there's still probably a, a move or two that needs to be uh, done because they're only at $18 million, which I think is under the cap. So, they're, uh, they should be good. 
Uh, but I, I still think there will probably be a, a one or two moves left for the Ducks where they just bring in some more cap. Uh, but quite honestly, I don't see this team as a contending team this year. Uh, with themselves being in the Pacific Division, without a doubt, they probably could. If you see a really good season out of Zegras and see Mason McTavish continue to grow, you could potentially see this team being without a doubt a playoff team, but I just don't see it. Uh, they're good, but they're just not that good just yet. So I love the offseason. There's still great moves that uh, they've done. Klingberg could be a great rental going into this offseason or going into this upcoming season, which will be huge, especially if you're able to get a first round pick in this upcoming draft, which is this upcoming draft is going to be really, really good. And I think if you can pick up another first round pick, I think that will be instrumental for the Anaheim Ducks moving forward. I really like a lot of the moves. I gave them an A minus uh, for this uh, offseason. I really liked what they did. They made some really smart moves none of the moves are really going to hurt them in the future so great job by Pat Verbeek in his first offseason and I'm really excited to see what he'll be doing next for the Ducks but for right now guys I'm going to end the video here uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button I'll be very much appreciated and uh, check out uh, my discord and all that and tell me guys in the comment section below what you guys thought uh, of the Anaheim Ducks offseason uh, let me know and uh, yeah for now guys I'm going to end the video here thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next one adios Amigos.